everybody. I see everybody to, uh, to get popped in here. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Like usual. Well, actually not like usual because Chris Mitchell is hunkered down somewhere hunting. I, I don't really know how hunting goes. I've never done it. Um, but I guess he's peeing in a jar and hasn't moved from his spot in a few days. So I don't think he's going to uh, have any signal. So where Chris <laughs> usually starts off, we will uh, we will start off without him. He's here in spirit and uh, start off with victories from last week. Today's call is going to be a little different. Um, the last two weeks we've had, you know, a special guest on each week. We've had two very uh, in-depth Zooms these last two weeks. And yeah. this is going to be a little more open format, especially with a masterclass tomorrow, which we'll get into. But let's just start with, I see CJ's already got. No, CJ. no, no. I was just going over last week's special guest, man, that disc. Oh. So, yeah, we had we had the disc two weeks ago and then we had Robert with uh, with branding last week. And uh, we're going to have a few more of those uh, over the next few weeks, kind of going into December. I got a really special one uh, that I'm working on that I'm really excited about that you guys are going to really like, which is probably going to be, I think it's going to kick off December, but we'll see. But I'm very excited for that. But it's good to see everybody. Uh, let's jump into some quick victories, and then we will get into I got two. I got two. Awesome, Mark. I'm really excited. I, I was able to schedule my first Calendly link. Um with with Pat McCool and a client. And um, he and I have been discussing the correct way to do that. Um, the, the link is also with a friend of mine and a cohort in other businesses. And so Pat was very politely telling me tonight or for tomorrow night when we do that, it was really funny actually. He said, he's your friend, so do us all a favor and just keep your mouth shut. <laughs> Let me do the talking. Because he said that Pat, one of cool Pat's face. strengths is <laughs> one of Pat's strengths is to ask a question and then wait for the pregnant pause. Wait for the wait for the client to say something, even if it seems like it's forever. You wait for it. And he said that the usually the third person in the in the in the um presentation has a tendency to want to jump in and quote save his friend. Said so, Mark. Absolutely. Just keep your yap shut. He's <laughs> very, very. So that was that. Term. Very correct. Good learning tool. And then the other other success I had was I was doing some non related solar work with a client of mine at a high school, and I just turned to him and I said, I just said, "Do you like your electric bill?" And in the span of about five minutes, I had a uh, another e bill, and I wasn't even thinking about. It pushing that guy because he's he's a school teacher and he's you know anyway so that worked out really good so i had two successes last week i'm really excited that's awesome i, I did just to kind of touch base on each of those number one pro tip i still do this to this day especially if i'm not outside in public when i'm on calls when i ask a question i still do this i mute my phone there's a couple different questions oh I all right use that I yep. mute my phone so I can't interrupt. People that tend to have extensive sales backgrounds, they're so used to asking a very specific question to elicit a very specific response and then jump on that, which I used to do this all the time. What I started to realize though, was when I'm jumping in and cutting the homeowner off because I'm so happy I got them to say what I wanted them to say, a lot of the supporting details that they were about to give me were the specifics needed to close that project. So mm -hmm. 100%, and especially, you know, as you be in the tier one in that scenario, I'm glad he told you that right out of the gate because it's human nature. Mute. If I'm a, if I'm a tier one, even when I being a tier three, if I'm connecting people, often I will do the initial connection and then I will mute myself out. So I don't, interrupt so that's awesome and then two, your second victory a lot of the quality conversations you guys are going to have are going to happen just like that they're going to be very organic they're not going to be thought out they're not going to be structured it's just going to be stuff that's just off the cuff 
And a lot of those are going to be deals that you're going to close. It's just, it's just the way that it works. You could get the, the best lead in the world with all of these different pieces of information that they filled out and they'll never talk to you. Then you get somebody who just go, do you like your electric bill? And they're like, no, I hate it. It's ridiculous. Start that conversation. And it's just, it comes off just way more authentic that way. So I, I think that both of those victories are absolutely massive and congratulations. Who's next? And I just wanted to add one sidebar. We pulled up the the Google map of, of my client's house and he lives in a track. There must've been, what was it, Pat? 200 houses in that in that Google shot that we looked at last night. And I mean, no, it was just, just all I saw were dollar signs because there's 200 houses and none of them had solar on them. Yeah, and that's all uh, packed <laughs> in really tight. And I'm just thinking, cha-ching, 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 cha-ching. Oh, you're, you're definitely closed. looking at it the right way now. That's for sure. Cause that's, I drive around to this day, even though I don't even sell in the state I live in every light that I'm at, I'm looking at, I'm looking at rooftops. I'm looking at orientation, what direction they're facing. If you mm -hmm. guys are driving around and you have Google maps open, you can just drop pins knowing that you're seeing a good subdivision, a good neighborhood, just to remind yourself to go back there, you know, use the methods that we've talked about that are free to find out who lives in that home, identify who the homeowners are, reach out to them. But those roof orientations, that's where it's at. Like there, there's no- well, Also in lack of foliage, there wasn't enough, there wasn't one house that was covered by a tree. Now so, I mean, not. just, you're right. That's, my head just goes that way now. You yep. can almost get into a car accident because you're you're too busy looking at the neighborhoods. Yep. No, that's, that's anyway, awesome. that That's my bits for this one. Thank you. Awesome, Mark. Who's next? I have a twenty kilowatt, twenty kilowatt, twenty five kilowatt going in tomorrow, today, tomorrow. There you go in Vegas. Yeah, well, they can power up the drone and uh, charge the batteries and go do some shoot, do some footage today. So awesome. What time is that? It's supposed to be like now. So like. It's like a three-day project. It's like, you know, they have oh, okay. electrical upgrade, railing. It's going to be a long process. So I'm going to get some donuts and stuff for them and, you know, make a fun day out of it. Talk to the neighbors. Nice. Also, uh, around 1 o'clock, jump into the Vegas market development. Cammy's going to be there today. I think there's going to be a big announcement that you're going to like. Um, I've been waiting for it. Yep. And just, just so everybody knows, because I know that it'll probably be announced at, this afternoon, but... Um, power gave us a commitment to the Las Vegas and Nevada market, even though this, this law that passed is incredibly bizarre and strange and nonsensical, uh, that we will be 100% compliant with it come January 1 when it happens. So we're not going to skip a beat. There's going to be different processes potentially. Um, we'll probably hopefully find those out today, but it's not like we need to leave the market. It's not like you don't want to recruit there or talk to homeowners there. I would still use end of year sense of urgency there because of the the cycle times there for sure. Um, but just wanted to make everybody aware of that. And then Raf, just being local there, just yeah, try to get in there at one o'clock today. Yeah, I just actually um we did a consult on Sunday with a gentleman. Um one of our newer guys got a got a six thousand square foot house to work on, like another twenty kilowatt out here. And we told him we meeting with him today, like, hey, look, man, everything's changing next month and a half or two. Price is going to go up. Like, what's going to happen when people go W-2? Insurance, clients, be more expensive, monopolization, adding a little sense of urgency to the conversation. And we should have a finalization on that project today or tomorrow just because of this simple conversation. You know? Yeah. So, use so use it. You're, you're doing it the right way. I mean, you know what you're doing. All right. Who's next? What do we got? Don't be shy. Yeah, I've got one for you, Jeff. Good morning, everybody. What's up? Good to see you. Hey, good to is see that you. Alex? That that is Alex. Did you forget what I look like, Raph? Yeah, but it looks like you're competing with Jeff for the beard hair versus the top hair. You know what I mean? I gotta come yeah. in big. Absolutely. I want to grow the beard as long as Jeff's actual hair. I like your backyard. Is that gonna all is that just your backyard? Yeah, you know. Um I'm I'm <laughs> trying to I'm trying to live like Wally. <laughs> um so hey this was pretty cool i actually um 
I had a, uh, I, I, I installed one client's house about a year ago. Then they referred over their, uh, I don't know, in-law of some sort and uh, comes full circle this last week. He messages me about something and I asked him how his system's doing. He's like, oh, it's, you know, it's doing killer. He goes, my sister, on the other hand, um, you know, her system's underperforming and she's talked to her, uh, you know, she called her, her solar company and they won't help her out at all. And, you know, she's called Edison and they won't help her out at all. And so they don't really know what to do. So, you know, I'm glad that we ended up going with you. I was like, well, give him my number. So I ended up for about an hour yesterday on the phone with the, the husband and, uh, you know, nobody's ever helped the guy. So he went with the company. I won't, I won't, you know, blast him out there, but, uh, he went with another company and this is, you know, they, we never met and going through everything with him and just sat down and, you know, Hey, let's look, go with your hourly, right. For your, uh, on your in-phase app and let's break everything down hourly and see where you guys are, you know, missing and come to find out he's had a true up, you know, for the last two years, um, since he got the system installed. So the, the wind kind of comes from what he found out is that the other company undersized the system intentionally in order to make the payment look better. So he's never had a, a properly sized system and nobody would help him to try and figure this out all the way along. So coming from that, he's like, Alex, I've got a few referrals for you immediately. Um, and even though, you know, I didn't use you, I just appreciate you taking the last hour to work with me um, and explain everything. So, you know, just kind of, a matter of even the ones that we don't think are going to, you know, bring a paycheck, right. Have those conversations and and the end game to them is, you know, this guy's going to end up throwing everybody he knows moving forward. Um, but a few right here immediately over our way. So um, that, that, that to me was a good conversation to have and a, and a good win on that. Huge, huge benefit to providing value, providing help. Cause like you said, even though you didn't necessarily have anything to do with that project just by pushing people in the right direction. Sometimes you become their go-to moving forward. Just period. You know, most of the people, if they're on the internet complaining, their solar system doesn't work. The panels don't work. It's probably their inverter that's blown out and they just don't know that. So when you can point people in the right direction with a really quick and easy piece of information, you know, maybe it gets you nothing and that's fine. Maybe it gets you five deals and that's awesome. But just just be that person, provide that value. And, and Alex, you're obviously a wealth of knowledge and about as about as detail oriented as anyone I've ever seen in my life. So this isn't very surprising that you're doing that. And that's why you you've been very fortunate to be extremely referral based because you do things the right way. Hey, can I actually piggyback on that real quick? Yeah. So I, I mean, uh, most people, you know, for pros out here, just do it. Be a good human being. You know, we're in this business always to make money, but always really to help people. And I do this all the time. People call me friends, family, friends, friends, friends for solar advice, helping them get inverters fixed, replaced, you know, panels, whatever's going on and doing deep dives and no one else will. Um, just this morning, actually, as a follow-up, a job I did three years ago, perfect job. Um, the inverter went out this last month in my a month or so. My homeowner was like, hey, man, I don't know what's going on. I have a bill. It's like 20 bucks. The first time I had a bill in three years. Um, I got the install or the the uh, company that we were with before to get them an inverter directly to ship to their house and be installed this morning. The gentleman just bought five houses, sorry, three more houses this year. In the last eight months, he bought three houses. He even sold with me twice and paid cash. Because I fixed this problem, because he had lost trust in certain situations with other companies, um, I'm not going to get another three or four houses plus six or seven other referrals for cash deals. Just going that little extra mile to help people out. Just saying, you never know what's going to turn out of this. Alex is definitely the right thing to do. And for those of you who think it might be a waste of time, it never is. It just makes you stronger professional in your space, in your community. It always pays dividends for sure. Hey, man, I, can just, I, can can just, I can just piggyback on that too. I was an audio engineer for years and years and years, and I have um, have a lot of background, and people constantly come to me and want me to fix either their home stereo or their church sound system or something like that, and I'm more than willing to volunteer to help them and solve their problem, which is then the perfect in to say, hey, let me, this, I don't do this anymore, but I, I, 
solve other people's problems with solar. Do, what's your electric bill like? And you can, it, it's once you have the rapport, the doors open, it's very easy to start the conversation and people are willing to listen. 100%. Felipe, what's up? Hey guys, yeah, I actually had a, a couple of good deals that I signed with Everbright. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, 100%. This industry is about serving people. And there are two uh, things that you got to show up to the party when helping anybody, serving anybody. And that is authority and credibility. Uh, a lot of times we're going to show up as the authority because you guys are, you know, training and learning about solar. And the credibility comes from the referral piece. And when you get to do a lot of the, um, the you know, extra work for people that even though you didn't help out, um, I just did one last week. You know, I told the guy, I can't really touch the the system um, unless you remove everything. And then we start all over again and, you know, be responsible for the new setup. And sure enough, call me up and says, hey, I think I want to remove everything and and go with them three now because he has a huge drop bill. So, yeah, um, building is setting yourself as the uh, the the credible person. Eventually, it will be time for you to show that credibility face and you're able to close deals left and right. So this is this is the, the this is where we are right now. We need to be more credible with people. And that means reaching out. And there's a lot of things going on in the industry that we're going to get into in a couple of minutes that are, are making that helpful and <clears throat> realistic and some of the trash is taking itself out. So you're totally right, Felipe. Tony, I see you want to get into something. So let me come to you in a second. Um, Kevin, what's up? Yeah, I, I just wanted to give a shout out um, to you, Jeff, uh, just, just for help uh, with uh, with various projects. Um you know, so right now we're uh, we're working on a project in Virginia that has kind of a unique shading issue that the customer was they're not quite sure about their shading and if it's actually going to uh, get give them what they want. And so they didn't want to sign a contract um, until they figured that out. And anyway, so so Jeff is helping me work uh, work through that. Um, hopefully by next week we'll we'll have an actual like finished uh, victory. Um, but anyway, it's, it's kind of in process. And so anyway, I just wanted to give a shout out to you, Jeff, and, and thank you again for your help on that. So that's it. No, I appreciate you. And I'm, I'm going to dig into the, what Dominic sent over to us mm -hmm. and, uh, and go, and just, just so you guys know. So also to kind of just elaborate a little bit, this is something that's very out of process. It's a very one-off weird scenario. And we reached out to the operations manager, said what was going on. He's been trying to help us get this figured out and just sent over an incredibly detailed explanation, full PDF, like multiple page breakdown of what's of what's going on. Uh, so a lot of the time, you guys just reaching out to people and saying, hey, here's 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 the issue that I'm facing. I think this is the solution. Can you think of something that would work better? And if they can, they'll tell you and then they'll do that. And if they can't, they'll help you escalate it. But a lot of the time we always, you know, just not power or not really solar, just in general, front end operations and back end operations are always kind of like separated. And I think what we've done a really good job at as a company and really as a, a culture within our, our group, especially, is understanding that one is nothing without the other. Like we we have to be communicated. We have to collaborate. Our project manager is going to do things to piss you off. Absolutely. That's why my beard is gray now. There's no doubt about it. Do balls get dropped? Yes. Does shit happen? Absolutely. It's construction. It's a mess. But generally speaking, for the most part, if something can be corrected or can be put back on track, it's going to happen. So yeah. So Kevin, I appreciate it. I'm always here to help you guys. And, and Dom's been really supportive and helpful helping us solve Rex on this one. Uh, Dr. Tim, what's going on? Hey, uh, not soul related. I know I've reached out to you before, but I'll reach out to the group again. Uh, we were talking about servant leadership and giving back. Uh, I am here for uh, all of you for any uh, veterinary second opinions. Uh, if you run into an issue with your animal, uh, sadly, the small animal side has gotten all about the money. Uh, I can cut through the bullshit and uh, let you know what's right for your animal. Hey, Tim, just put your contact info in the chat box too. Okay. That way everybody can save it. Thank you.
Uh, Thanks for sharing. Man. I didn't know you were a vet until now. Oops. Where do you think I get my prescriptions from, Pat? Be quiet, Curtis. That was between the two of us. Don, stop the recording. <laughs> um, awesome. Kathy, Kathy, who I saw at her first Mentor Monday. What's going on, Kathy? <laughs> um, I just considering I'm piggybacking on Tim um, for the team because I, as you already know, Jeff, I like to give. So if any of you guys need marketing or some direction, I'm here to consult you. Um, I have over 25, 30 years of marketing consulting um, and social media stuff. So I want to give to the team as much as possible. Um, so just for you guys to know that. Also, my win for this week isn't solar related. After about a year or two years of not being invited to any movie events, I was random. It wasn't random. We've been building the new, building the old site, but I was able to take my daughter to a VIP event for the new Trolls movie, and awesome. this time, this time I was able to enjoy it. Back when I was doing it as my full time thing, I didn't enjoy those kind of things. I was so worried about building the content. This time, when I went to that event, because it's my husband and daughter's company now. <laughs> And solar is my thing. I was able to actually enjoy it as I was building content with them. So that's my win. That's fantastic. I think there's definitely something to be said about being present where you are and being able to just enjoy what you're doing. You know, often we're so stuck with our phones. It's hard to ever be present anywhere or focus on anything. I've started leaving my phone in the car when I do stuff now. Um, I just so I'm just I'm like the only person that doesn't have my phone like throughout the movie like if you go sit in the back of a movie theater these days and you just look down at the seats you see over half the people are on their cell phones and I'm they like, are oh. I, I wish I I wish I could say that I could have dropped my cell phone I couldn't because the, it was still a, a gig for the for the site but I didn't feel like I didn't belong. What powers helped me do is learn about me inside. And I remember sitting across from Jack Black and Common and even um, Mila Coolidge thinking, why am I at the table? Am I supposed to be here? You know, and I shouldn't have felt that way. Now I, I just have a little bit more confidence all the way around. It kept powers helped me become well shaped and balanced. So that's what was my win. That's awesome. Congrats, Kathy. Uh, any other last minute wins before we can uh, jump into some updates? Anthony, that's right. What's up, brother? Come on, bro. You know I'm dropping bombs here. Right? That's kind of what I do. So <clears throat> I want to share with you guys some some tips that I did. Okay, in that chat, I put a website there called Eventbrite.com. Uh, in the last four or five days i've gone to three events okay haven't had to pay for any of them outside of my bar tab which is what it is but these events you can go to and if you type in your area your zip code and then just go into search events for network marketing okay uh, i found three events that i went to right here's all the business cards that i stacked up over the last couple of days of so going to these free events um I got three appointments. One, another one actually with a real estate agent who owns a Remax agency with 35 reps. Okay. None of them have any idea what to do when they get a solar deal. So I'm doing a training for their entire group next week to basically teach them how to handle a solar deal. Guess who's signing all 35 of them up as ambassadors. Okay. And getting them into the program. Now, the reason why I share this with you guys is because this doesn't cost you a damn dime. You look at your calendar. If you've got some free time, go to these networking meetings, right? Most of them are free, okay? Some of them are paid, but most of them are free. I went to one last night, right? I had no, I had no appointments or anything for the night, so I booked myself in. I, I went over. They did it at a distillery, and I made some friends um, with a couple of people and basically just share the solar opportunity. 
And when you explain to people, one guy's running a hot dog stand, this other girl was doing a closet design or some some bullshit like that. When you explain to them what the opportunity is in our business compared to whatever the fuck it is that they're doing, okay, and the money that they can make here, it's really a no-brainer, you know? So I share this with you guys because this is a free resource. It's all, you know, people go to these meetings looking to network with people, right? And what I do, what my strategy is, I go and I hand out these. Everybody kind of goes and exchanges business cards, right? Now, I hand out these $100 bill cards, and I just kind of chat with people. And the trick to this is simple. If I give you this and I meet you in person, one, you're not going to forget me. But two, if I call you in two months, I promise you, you're going to remember me. So what I do is I usually wait like three or four days, and then I start going through the business cards, and I start calling these people kind of recapping on the conversation that I've had. This is a free resource for everybody. Eventbrite works nationwide. You can find anything you want in there from business contacts to a date for Saturday night, and it ain't going to cost you a dime. So take a peek at that site, utilize that site, and you can thank me later. That's all I got for now. Dropping bombs as always. You, you guys, Tony is, is so accurate there. There is literally no reason that you don't have people to talk to it is so easy now through platforms and apps to in person or virtually get into and start conversations in any market that you want to if your market is not great for solar that's fine use what you're using already to go somewhere else if you live in a state that we don't operate in that's fine use platforms and technology to go elsewhere. They're, the excuses that people had years ago simply just don't matter anymore. They just yeah. don't. And just to give you guys like a little pointer, right? They go around the room at all these business networking events and they hand the microphone around to everybody, right? So when they got to me, I just, I, I put the microphone down because I'm loud enough, I don't need a mic. And I just said, guys, who in this room has an electric bill? Raise your hand, right? Of all of you guys that have your hands up, how many of you guys would like to see that bill disappear and get paid by the state to actually convert to renewable energy? It's a lot easier than you think. I had a bunch of people come over to me. Hey, how does that work? Tell me more. Right? You give them just you set the hook, let them swim around a little bit, and then reel their ass back into the boat. So it works. Just get out if, there. And nothing if, I can, if I can say something to Tony, uh, I want to spot put the spotlight on this for everyone who's here especially if you're brand new to the group um tony has been transforming the way he operate his business if we look back tony was a successful door knocker and was making a great living selling solar and was used to doing things his way but thanks to what he's been able to accomplish and network and everything i've seen a transformation not only the way he operates, but his income and be able to now literally just make money from Zoom. This is a guy that was completely like against, like, I don't want this stuff. This is not my forte. And now it's like, I'm just so proud and and, and honored to have, you know, Tony as, on my side as well too, because he's definitely a, a breathing truth of what this platform can deliver if you only apply What's being taught here and if you follow it. And consistency is what's so scary about him. He is so consistent. I've seen those hundred dollar bills every convention I go to. I know he's there. I got one on my desk. <laughs> yeah. Um, I got one on my refrigerator. They work, guys. And you know, the thing is, is you know, when you when you kind of go out to like these networking meetings and things like that, and this is something I'm just thought, this is a new kind of venture. And honestly, I spend more on my bar tab than I do on my, uh, on, my, on my entrance fees to these things, right? But, you know, you get a night out, you get to meet some people, you know? I mean, you, a, a kind of a funny story. I had one one chick that was rude to me yesterday, right? Eh, do I look like I'm going to lose any sleep over it, right? Not a big deal. But, you know, the thing is, is I, I, you get a chance to actually meet a lot of people. And, you know, when you go, when, like I said, the, the network event that I went to yesterday, I'm kind of just looking around the room and it's like, 
I'm sizing everybody up and I'm looking for the movers, the shakers. I'm looking for the hustlers, you know, there weren't so many of them out there. So you're either, you're pitching one of two things. This either I'm trying to get appointments to sell somebody solar, or I'm trying to recruit somebody's ass to get them from doing some, some dead end bullshit job into coming over here. Right. And that's, that's, that's the mentality that I go in there with. And um, you know, the, the, the logic of it is simple. It's just, you know, you got nothing to lose. You take the shots, you know, you meet people. Like I said here, guys, this one over here, right? This is a husband of a, a wife and husband team. They got a Remax agency with 35 reps, 35 fucking reps. Okay. I'm doing a training for them next week. The training that I took from the Bernasos that I kind of recapped it and redid it for myself. And I'm going to, I'm going to do a virtual training for all 35 of them. I'm going to make sure that every one of them give me their email address and contact info. I'm signing every single one of them up as soon as, as ambassadors, as soon as that thing is done and bring them into the platform, All right? What would you pay for an opportunity like that to get in front of 35 real estate agents? All you need is to get yourself out there. Remember, what's the worst thing that can happen to you? I, and I say this for a reason. One of the chicks was rude to me yesterday, right? So, you know, I sat down at the table, I'm chatting with them and I'm like, oh, so what do you do? So I go, oh, I do solar panels. So this one girl, you know, with purple hair and all the other, you know, fun stuff looks at me and goes, what's the payback period on solar? Which is for anybody who knows anything, that's a buying question, right? So I said, okay, well, it really depends on a couple of factors. You know, what you do with the investment tax credit, how, how you know, um, efficient your solar system is going to be. And she looks at me and goes, I'm not even interested in solar. I don't like you guys. Maybe she had a door knock too many times. Maybe she had whatever. So I just kind of looked at her and I was like, yeah, you know, I, I wish I could help you, but you really can't even go solar. You need a 650 credit score in order to be approved. Zing. <laughs> right back at you, pumpkin. You know, um, but, you know, I share these things with you guys because, you know, of, of the opportunities that you'll get, you know, you don't let that kind of stuff bother you. You know, you talk to these people, you hand out business cards, you make some friends, you make some connections, and it doesn't cost anything, right? So it, it's a free resource. Guys, please use it, right? Type in your zip code. So I signed up to three of them this week. I'm going to another one tonight, B, a B, BNI. You can bounce around to all of these things and meet a ton of people and cover a lot of ground. So, you know, there's no excuse for not having appointments. Is they're right there. All you got to do is take them. And that's a good way to do it. There's a reason you're having the success that you are. Let's just let's just say that. That's may, may, I, may I ask, Jeff, because now my ears are um, sparkling. Can Anthony do a training on how to educate realtors um, on solar, like what he's doing? On the um, Can he do that in the future for us? to teach the whole team how to educate realtors? Well, I have, and I'll, I'll tell you what I did. Um, John Bonasso put together a while back a training on educating realtors because he was a real estate agent. So what I did was I took his training and I essentially copied it and kind of listened to it. I've done this pitch a couple of times with real estate agents because you got to look at the market, right? Understand interest rates are killing the market right now. Real estate agents now are looking at a seven and a half to an eight percent fixed rate on a 30 year financing. Whereas yeah. a year ago, that was two and a half, three percent. So they are not doing the volume that they used to do. So when you talk to a real estate agent, they've already got all the tools that they need to be successful in this business. They know how to talk to people. They know how to do in-home presentations. You know what I mean? They, they, they already have most of the damn tools and they have a book of business. So if you talk to a real estate agent, one of the, one of the kind of tips that I got from Aaron Browning is, you know, just say to them, Hey, you know, if, would you be interested in a side hustle? If, if the money was interesting enough, Hey everybody, this is Jonathan. There it is. Somebody found it. Oh, right. could you share that link in the What's thing? That link in there? It's a really good one. Just take that. You know, what I did was I took that and I made a new Microsoft Excel uh, slide deck with yeah. it, with my own, with my own cards and stuff like that. And, um, you know, boom. You know what maybe we'll do in a couple of weeks, Anthony, is we'll do the presentation on here, record it. That way we just have a recorded version of you doing it. That works. I'm with it. Okay. Awesome. CJ, over to you, brother. One yeah, last thing before I go, my apologies, guys, uh, Thursdays at 11, I do the market development calls for New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and I drop, I drop a lot of bombs in there, a lot of bombs, so you don't want to miss that.
All right, I'm I glad. watched your replay from a couple of weeks ago. Yes. You were recorded on one of those, Anthony. Yeah. I just want to point out how clear, clearly Anthony speaks now. There's no doubt. Like, it's bullet point. Boom, boom, boom. Number two, Kathy, I just threw the YouTube of Jonathan Bernasso in. Uh, I just did a YouTube search of Jonathan Bernasso real estate. I don't know if it's the right one or not, but it's a slide deck. Uh, also, you can search uh, Cynthia Alvidrez as well on YouTube. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Cynthia shared her deck with me, actually. Yep. Um, and, so and there's we, a lot of knowledge that's shared back and forth. Like, but here, here's what I'm running. Like, here's here's a thought. And Jeff asked me to just speak really shortly. I spoke with Pat McCool, who's like right beside me, ironically, face to face on these uh, little this little Zoom screen right now. And Pat and I took a deep dive into two things last night, the simplicity of marketing, how to keep something very simple when you're doing outreach. And then I learned a ton from you, Pat, last night. And then in exchange, I was talking about how to stand out from every other solar company out there, which we're all trying to do. And we do it through digital marketing, personal branding, uh, working with a Forbes 500 company or a Fortune 500 company or Inc. 500, whatever we're rated, right? But when it really comes down to it, what we're experiencing in, in Colorado and the Texas markets right now, and Alex Sorlagas had to leave, he was hitting on it earlier. Going beyond just the vanilla, solar is going to save you money. Dude, nobody buys anything, anything for savings. We buy things that we want and we use savings or cost to justify that. So what we're experiencing here is unreal. We are literally telling people if they want the cheapest price monthly for solar, call somebody else. Call, call Ion, call Blue Raven. They'll cut your panel count. It'll be grid tied. When the grid goes down, your panels won't work. And then when you need help, they're not going to be around. That's why they're the cheapest. Go ahead. Here's their numbers. And then we use Jeff Martin's little practice button, which is mute. And you would be amazed at the power of silence. What do you think people do when you give them somebody else's phone number because they're looking for the cheapest price? And then you hit mute on your phone. And there's that silence, right? They freak out in their mind. Their mind actually gets engaged. And they say things. And these are real things that we've heard. Joel's out there like wow, listening in right now. I had a client last week that literally uh, told me, I already bought 24 300 watt Q cell panels from a guy online. Will you put them on my trailer so they're portable? And I was like, no, I can't, but I'll give you a number of a guy that can, right? He's like, I don't want your, I've talked to eight solar companies, blah, blah, blah. I just started connecting him with information that he needed, saving my time, trying to get off the call. And what turned out, he sent me his address yesterday. He's like, maybe I should look at grid tied with a battery and a smart panel. Like, I should probably look at what you're offering. I did the opposite of what the industry does. I'm not going to save you money each month. That's ridiculous. Doing a $40,000 loan to save $8 a month right now? Who would do that? If you're looking for $8 a month or more, go to one of those cheap companies I don't have time for like my attitude was like, I didn't have time for it. And I learned this from Tony, like value your time. What is amazing is when you get somebody stunted or stalled in their thought process, just for a second, their true thoughts come out and they understand that you're being real. You're being honest. So Alex Rolagas was hitting on it earlier. He's like, you know, I took an hour out of my time to help this solar client that wasn't even my client understand some stuff 
And now I have five or six referrals coming my way. One hour for five referrals, which leads me, that's amazing, which leads me to point number two. We've been meeting a lot, not just this meeting, but we've been meeting a lot, a, a few people, a few faces on this call. One of the big things that seems to be reoccurring, because I have the notes from yesterday's office hours, is the impedance of contacting folks because of something that's between these six and a half inches between our earlobes. I don't know what to say. I'm not worthy. Is solar really a good deal? I'm not going to save them enough money each month. When you start pulling away those things that don't matter, what you're left with is Tony. Hey, I got a free night. I'm going to go find a networking event. Tony didn't, didn't call me or Jeff. I almost guarantee he didn't call me or Jeff or Don. I know he didn't call me. Tony did not call somebody and say, hey, can you kind of brief me on how to go to a networking event? I need a handout. Tony just probably figured I'm going to a networking event. We'll see what happens. Right? Tony, did you did you call anybody in prep? Did you say, hey, I need a script for, for my my networking event or did you trust oh. yourself enough to just I go show up like I own the fucking place. That's what I do. That's exactly what I wanted to hear. Just show up like you own it. Uh, yesterday we talked about if you practice anything for 18 minutes a day for one year, you're in the top 5% in the world. Almost everybody in this call has practiced 18 minutes a day on uh, solar verbiage. You're in the top 5% guys. Uh, that's my complete rant today. The reason why all of this is apparent to me is not because of anybody on this call. It's because of me. It's because I face these things. I'm like, I'm not worthy. I don't know what to say. Maybe I'm not prepared enough. I have to be perfect before I go. To hear Tony just saying, hey, I had a night off. I wanted to go meet some people. That's fun, man. And having Pat McCool on the team is awesome. I'm all complete. This is a push till the end of the year. Last year, November and December were my, my two biggest months uh, because people want to finish up projects before the calendar flips. It is not the slow time of the year like all the other solar bros talk about. Solar bros talk about ups and downs. And while they're busy planning and nodding their head wisely, guys like Tony are out there making it happen. So Tony, I freaking love you, man. Uh, number two, I wanted to introduce Ron Maurer. Ron is going to introduce something that he wants to offer to the team every Saturday. Take it away, Ron. Hey, guys. Good to be here. Good to be back. I was in Michigan for a while. Uh, Jeff, I should have reached out, but I was tied up with a bunch of stuff around a funeral, unfortunately, so I didn't do that. But uh, next time, I'll get a hold of you. Um, really quick, on the um, office hours on solareventcalendar.com, um, uh, I haven't been on every one. Uh, there's something I'm not seeing uh, consistently, which I wanted to reach out and encourage everyone to do. And that is to promote the very next one the next day. We do have two now on Monday and two on Thursday. A um, couple of weeks ago, I hopped on to Chris's uh, and he said, this is the first time I've had someone on. So <clears throat> they're not gonna grow if we don't uh, promote the next ones. Um, if that's what you guys wanna do, I, I definitely encourage you to do it. Um, I'm going to put in the chat um, a while back here in Denver, I did a talk. It's called a power tech talk. And the idea is all those basic things that people need, especially when they're new. How do I find this? How do I do a screen capture? How do I create a business card or a signature on an email? All of those kind of things that people uh, bug you about. Um, I found this was a way to help free up everyone's time from having, um, especially those that are new to this or new to computers um to um to get engaged a little bit it may become a series um, we can hit different topics uh, help teach people how to make posts from facebook different things like that uh, hopefully save leadership's time uh, because we can do it as a group instead of people reaching out and calling so i'm going to do the first one uh this saturday um, is listed on the calendar at 10 a.m mountain so from 10 to 11 uh, you're welcome to share that and get that out there uh, so just a quick little promo, um, and that's as simple as the promos need to be at the end of your office hour as well. 
Um, and so we'll see. We got Miss Kathy on there Monday nights now. So Kathy, good job. Uh, looking forward to seeing your uh, attendance increase this next Monday now that it's posted. Um, I guess that's it for now. Thanks, Curtis. Thanks, everybody. Um, let me know if there's any questions or anything comes up. Awesome. Thanks, Ron. Appreciate you doing that. All nope. right. So let's see. So we got uh, we got 15 minutes left. Uh, a couple quick things I want to hit before the top of the hour, and then we'll jump into my office hour, those who stay, and then the rest of you will release back into the wild. Um, one, I don't, we didn't really talk about this much last week because we had Robert on. Um, the last week to two weeks in this industry has been crazier than I think we've probably ever seen. Um, I think we're so used to the ebbs and flows that sometimes things happen. We're just like, yeah, whatever. And we just keep moving. But there's been a lot of really notable things that have happened. And I wanted to just kind of run through these really quick. Um, SunPower did a very large layoff. Sunrun lost $1.2 billion in a lawsuit that they had to pay to their investors uh, for basically just running a bad business. $1.2 billion was lost to the point that this wasn't to increase their infrastructure or to buy a ton of equipment at a good price for Q4, one and two or whatever. This was just straight negligence from a business standpoint to the point that people actually had to step in and, and protect the investors. Um, this is not being talked about enough. This is wild. When I there's a lot of people on here that have worked with Sunrun in the past. Um, this is a massive company. This is not, and, and again, this is not anything where you want companies going out of business. There's 90 plus million homes to go solar. We're not really competing with anybody, in my opinion. And when when companies go out of business, bad things happen to their existing customer base. That's a big problem with the way that warranties are written in this industry. However, when you look at a company doing things like this, and you look at traditionally what companies do to reduce costs, to increase profitability, they lay off salaried employees and they cut commissions of salespeople. Well, to date, I don't think I've even seen a company out there that's at least a multi-state company that pays less than Sunrun does. So for them to now absorb another $1.2 billion and just straight slap on the wrist, you're kind of an idiot cause. Um, I don't know how this is sustainable. I, I just, this is, this is really bad. Um, I don't know if this is going to set a precedence for other solar companies. Um, but it's going to be very interesting to kind of watch how this plays out over the next few months. CJ, I think you wanted to say something. Yeah. So uh, we just got wind yesterday morning of what Sunrun's trying to do to bail themselves out of their financial situation. And guess what they're doing? They, I well, would they, say cut, do they, they cut everything like you're talking about, Jeff. They took away the company cars and the corporate cars, except for the high up managers. Right. Sounds like a pyramid scheme to me. Right. I mean, just sounds like a pyramid scheme. Uh, that was a rip. That was for all of us to listen to. But they're doing a beta test in California right now of not selling solar. They're selling retrofit batteries. And then any new solar has to have a battery, which we we offer four batteries on our platform. So the reason why I'm pounding on this stack up your deals not just monthly savings talk about solar with a battery and a span and a car charger if you're talking to your clients about that stuff you're beating these people to the punch these other competitors they've been so slow in selling savings 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 
That's why most people don't have solar because people are like, it doesn't really save you. Why would I take out a loan to do this when I want grid security, when I want a car charger, when I want a smart home? So with them cutting their slashing their wages, they're on their way out and they're doing a quick beta test right now. All they're really doing is going through their entire book of business and offering them a battery retrofit and they're not paying their reps jack. I think the last Sunrun rep I talked to you was making $500 a close. Sorry, Jeff. I just fired up. Go ahead. And I mean, it's, it's, it's true. I know you guys are very intertwined and still in the know over in Colorado with them. So it's good to kind of hear that their next plan seems worse than their last one. Um, Jesus. Um, well, sticking with that ADT solar uh, reduced their footprint by 70%. 70% of the markets they were in, uh, 100% of the markets they were in, uh, for every three that stayed open, seven closed last week. Uh, out of nowhere, no heads up. Congratulations, 70% of you across the country that are working for this company. Uh, you're not selling solar anymore because they're not in business any longer. The ADT? Sorry, I missed it. Yep, ADT reduced their footprint. 70% of their, their shops, they closed up. You know what's funny about that? I closed a deal uh, a week and a half ago, and the guy came with the ADT quote, and they maxed out the whole thing at eighty thousand dollars. He's like, "We're gonna do it. all security system, all this stuff, just to you know, max out the whole system." He's like, "Yeah, it's what it's what we do." I was like, "Don't go with the company; it's a scam." And then a week later, that comes out. <laughs> it's you guys. It's it's crazy what's happening right now. And months ago, when all of the finance companies came out and said half the solar companies of business today will not be in business this time next year. Uh, they were not, they were not joking. Like they, they know what they're talking about. They're seeing all these deals coming through. Um, and then lastly, this one, I know a few of you are probably more in the know of this than I am, but this $1.8 billion verdict against the national association of realtors this ripple effect is probably going to be massive in an industry that is already currently on life support. The reason that I'm mentioning all of these things is not to gloat or be happy. I don't want anybody to lose their job. I don't want any of these businesses to close. And I don't want any homeowners who signed a document for something for five to 25 years to get stuck in something as collateral damage. I live what in was, What was the lawsuit for um, the realtors? It's about a $60 billion in commission. That's basically, I don't know if it's collusion related. It almost read like a mob verdict. Um, it's basically saying that they were artificially keeping values, places that they shouldn't be to protect their commissions. And what it looks like moving forward is the commission structure for real estate is probably going to significantly be changing. And anytime that things like this change, uh, hint, hint, they don't change in favor of the people getting paid. They don't change in favor of the salespeople. They don't change in favor of the real estate agents. This is going to change in favor to the homeowners, uh, to the buyers, to the sellers. This is not good for real estate. And right now, real estate is already in a really, a really bad spot. Yes, Tim, it does kind of read like a Rico case. That's that's why I said the mob thing. It's wild. Um, the reason that I'm saying this is, and CJ alluded to this, up until power, November and December for me in solar were basically, I'm not working. It was usually about next week until after January 1 that we would start being able to work again. Since coming to power, my last two De uh, Decembers and Novembers have been larger than some of my summer months. The only way that I can really explain this is because of our model, because of dealing with a lot of warm market relationships, that's what people are looking for. They spent all summer getting door knocked by people they didn't trust. Now, when somebody introduces them to somebody that they already trust and you know what you're doing, they're trying to get this in. 
before the year ends. Um, so I guess ultimately November, December is going to be what you make of it. And I think what Anthony said earlier is the, is the greatest use of time that I've heard in a while. Because if something is slowing down, for those of you that are doing online marketing, it's going to dramatically slow down. The algorithms of every single company you would be using reward spenders, and I don't care who you are, you're not going to spend more during Black Friday and the holiday season than the people that are selling shit to people, period. We would turn our marketing off from November until February. So this is where Anthony's going to these events and recruiting people in areas that he wants to operate in, in areas that are great for solar and people that are out there. When you go to live events, people are there to make money. People are there to make more money than they're currently making. They're very interested in something. These are highly motivated people. The people that stayed at home, the people that didn't show up to the, the to you know this today, they're not as motivated as the people that do. It's just human nature. Go find the people that are out there hustling, that are out there trying to get a couple more hours in their day to make some more money. These industries around us are crumbling in front of our faces. And again, this is not ha-ha. What this is, is this is the greatest free agent season we're going to see. COVID has, the, the COVID span and the, the ripple effect uh, post-COVID, what it's done is it's made people who prior to COVID would have never thought about switching what they do for a living. They're extremely talented. They're the best at what they do. And they thought they were going to die in whatever job they were in. Now they've understood that they don't maybe have to do that. Maybe they don't have to leave the house 70 hours a week to go to the office anymore, and they like being home with the kids. Maybe being home with the kids has driven them crazy to now where they're looking for a side gig to get the hell out of their house because their kids are psychopaths. You, you don't know, but the gig economy works, and secondary sources of income are now higher than what people's number one was in the past. Be in the conversation like Anthony's doing. He's putting himself on the playing field. Do not be on the sidelines during this time. These next six to eight weeks, this is where you meet your Curtises. This is where you meet your Felipe's, where you meet your Anthony's. This is where they're looking. You know, don't, I, I see people wait until like the after Christmas before New Year's to start talking to people about their 2024 plans. If somebody hasn't figured out what they want to do in 2024 and it's December 30th, newsflash, you don't want to work with them. You just don't, period. These people are planning this stuff out now. They're thinking about it now. They're starting to reflect back on the last 10 months of this year and see what do they want to do differently moving into next year. Or if they're a real estate agent, they're looking at how many deals they sold this year, how much money they're making, what's that compared to last year. Now with this new thing that's going in law, how is that going to affect them moving forward? They're starting to look around. And when people are looking to their left and they're looking to their right and they're trying to figure out what to do next, you need to be right by them doing this. Hey, come here, jump in. Water's warm. Have this conversation. Let them know what you do. But if you're not talking to people, they're going to be going elsewhere. This is a feeding frenzy that we are on the doorstep of. It's going to look like hungry, hungry hippos when it comes to talented people going to what that next thing is going to be. And if you are new to power, or if you've had massive success here, or you're somewhere in the middle, I can't to this day identify if I wanted to be in sales, if I wanted to be building relationships with referral partners, what in the world outside of here I would be. I have no idea what I'd be doing if I wasn't here. I don't have a clue. I wouldn't be in solar if I wasn't a power. I know that. I don't know what I'd be doing. But I'm I'm, I'm glad I'm here. I'm glad I'm taking taking responsibility. Do not sleep through this holiday season. If you sleep through this holiday season, now again, take time off. Go enjoy your family. Go enjoy your friends. Go do epic shit. I always want you doing that. But it's not over yet. It's not. And the, the more time that you just say, oh, you know, I'll get to that in January. I'll do that in January. The more less momentum you're starting January with. 
you know, build into it. I don't see you. I can't, I see you, but I can't, I can't read what's on that screen, but I'm assuming since you've left the room and are pointing at a whiteboard, it's similar to what I'm talking about right now. Version of you is whatever you can believe in, man. It's what it's you can act upon. It's what you can follow through with. And it is yours. It's true. This is the version of you. And you just said like a key word, that like you're going to flourish here. Imagine what your Wednesday, like an average Wednesday in March looks like with the work that you put in now. Imagine an average weekday in the spring. Imagine getting a check for $2,083. Five days a week. Yep. And if you can imagine yourself doing those things, this version of you, like Tony has a version in his mind, he has a version that he follows. I'm going to walk in like I own the place, Tony. I'm changing his nickname from Tony Shingles to Tony. I'm going to walk in and own the place, right? There's also some of us on this call that have a different version than Tony has, which is we wake up in the morning. Mine is, wow, this is going to be a tough day because I have so many problems on like projects on fire. Oh, am I worthy? That version isn't serving my uh, my ultimate goal. I, I don't mean to go deep here, but you you hit on it, Jeff. And this is what we do in our office. This version that you can believe in is what will show up three, four, five months from now in your in your bank account. So if you're constantly waiting for somebody to build something perfectly before you move, in March, in April, you're going to be constantly looking at your bank account, hoping that something falls into there so you can move. Or you can reinvent the version of yourself right now, like Jeff is talking about, and or be like Tony. Hey, every room I walk into, I'm going to own it. And we have that choice. And it's every moment of every day. And if we make the choice, the version of me, well, there's there's a number on that board for my team here. But $2,083 is a really small commission in solar. That's you giving this thing away at 40 cents a watt, right? And that is 240 days a year, you get one deal. You made a half a million dollars. If you want the real number, it's 4,081. If you have four conversations a day, set three appointments, present to two of those people, and you do that for every working day in a calendar year, which is 240, that gives you three weeks off plus weekends off, you'll make a million dollars faster than Wally or Ida. So my, my question for every, everybody on this call, including myself, is what is stopping me from having those conversations? Worthiness, perfection, uh, our price isn't great enough. That's bullshit, man. Uh, I don't mean to sound like a preacher, but I'm really, I woke up on the wrong side of bed today. I'm full of piss and vinegar, Tim. So let's go. Well, listen, and and by by CJ thinking that way a year ago, two years ago, that's why Colorado is the fourth biggest state on the platform. That's why. It's, it's None of this shit's accidental. Tony's doing what he's doing. It's not an accident. Um, I have two quick things. Rachel, I see your hand up. I want to kick it to you. And then two things and we're done. I got to jump in my office hour. Plus Mike is going to own a house. Thank you. Um, yeah, I just uh, texted my sister, who's a realtor in Massachusetts for over 30 years. She never gets ruffled about anything. And my message to her was, are you guys worried about the class action lawsuit? They're saying it could really change the real estate commission structure. And in all caps with exclamation points, yes. So I think this is a real opportunity for us to be um, reaching out to those realtors. So I want to work with this team and um, see what we what we think our messaging could look like to uh, to do some campaigning. That's awesome. Well, it's not awesome. You know what I mean. Um, right. But 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 yes, absolutely. I mean, this is. I'd be more scared if if a realtor told me this wasn't a big deal because that would tell me that they're not really paying attention. The ones that are paying attention who are already on like a five alarm because of what's going on with everything. This is like, you know, this is dropping a nuke in a dumpster fire. Basically, this is a really big deal. Um, so thank you for doing that. Uh, tomorrow, nine to one Pacific Masterclass Immersive. Um, 
a lot of announcements. There hasn't been many announcements the last two weeks, always because they come they come at the Masterclass Immersive uh, tomorrow, which is 9 to 1. You guys will all get a message about that. You know where to find it. And then lastly, Friday is Veterans Day. So one, thank all the veterans you know. Two, if you need stuff, get it on Thursday. Corporate's going to be closed and support is going to be open but limited because of the holiday. So plan accordingly prior to everything. Don't wait till Friday for something you need. Get it handled, done, complete on Thursday. So Friday, you don't have to worry about it. We got plenty of headaches. The more the more self-inflicted ones we can avoid, the better. Um, but all right, everybody, great call. I got to jump into my office hour, jeffsofficehour.com. I'm going over there right now. And uh, if I see you there, I see you there. And if not, enjoy the week. And I'll see you at the Immersive tomorrow. Take care, everybody.